Hi again, and welcome to Android App Development Training Course. Today, you are going to understand the fundamental concepts behind layouts and activities to start designing your app's user interface. An activity provides the window in which the app draws its UI. This window typically fills the screen and floats on top of other windows. Generally, one activity implements one screen in an app. Though, most app contains multiple screens, which means they comprise multiple activities, but typically, only one activity in an app is specified as the main activity, which is the first screen to appear when the user launches the app. Each activity can then start another activity in order to perform different actions. For example, the main activity in an online shopping app may provide a screen that shows a list of recommended products or products that are on sale. And from there, the main activity might launch other activities that provide screens for tasks like viewing up product description, reviews and ratings, my account details, and so on. In Android app development, an activity is a class. And in our case, we are using Kotlin programming language to define our main activity class. The way activities are launched and put together is a fundamental part of the Android platform's application model. Unlike with most of your desktop apps wherein the main method serves as the entry point of the application as a whole, the Android system is different. An activity serves as an entry point for an app's interaction with the user. It initiates code in an activity instance by invoking specific callback methods that correspond to specific stages of the activity lifecycle. In this auto-generated code that is provided to us when we selected to create an empty activity in the project template, you can see this onCreate function that overrides the onCreate method of its parent class AppCompatActivity. This onCreate is just one of the six core callback methods that comprise the stages of the activity lifecycle. The other five callbacks are as follows. On start, on resume, on pause, on stop, and on destroy. We'll talk about more of these in some later videos. For now, you just have to understand that this function on create fires when the system first creates and launches the activity. This is the area where you perform your basic application startup logic that should happen only once for the entire life of the activity. For example, when you bind data to a list or instantiate and initialize class level variable and so on. The call to this set content view method sets the user interface layout file for this activity. The argument passed here is the XML file's resource ID, R that layout that activity main. This R is an auto-generated class that contains the definition for all the resource IDs of your application in the res directory. You can find your activity underscore main under res layout activity main that XML. Note that you can also jump and open this file by simply pressing the control key in Windows and clicking the corresponding link that appears. So it only means that when this main activity is created, it will use this activity underscore main.xml as its user interface layout. Eventually, you will add several activities aside from this single main activity. You might ask, how will you know which activity will be used when launching the app? If you take a look at this Android manifest.xml file, you'll see this activity tag with the attribute name set to dot main activity. This points to our main activity class. I can press the control key and then click this to open the file. And going back, you'll see this intent filter with action set to main and category set to launcher. It means that this main activity will serve as the entry point when we launch the application. So basically, if you have other activities in your project, you can use this expression to specify which activity will be the main activity for your app. So just to recap, when we run our application, we specify in the Android manifest.xml file the main activity that will launch. And then, when the main activity is launched, its onCreate callback method fires. And the one that you see on the screen as the activity's user interface is actually the XML layout file. So now, let's go ahead and start designing our user interface for this main activity. When working with an XML layout file, recall that we can choose either the design, code, or split mode. I'll maximize the space and I'll switch back to design mode. This empty activity template already has one parent container, a constraint layout, and one child view, a text view component. And now, let's do some small changes to this text view. 
In the Attributes window, under Common Attributes, I'll look for the text that says Hello World and replace it with Hello Joed. You'll notice that the text inside this text view has changed automatically. I'll also change the text appearance and set it to Display 1. This makes our text a bit larger. I'll switch back to Split Mode again to see what has changed to my XML layout file. And in here, you'll see the text and the text appearance attributes change as well. In your layout editor, you'll see two screen layouts that are almost identical, but actually they are not. The one on the left is the actual design, and the one on the right is the blueprint. Well, this blueprint layout is just an additional tool that can be used in some situations like when there are overlapping views so you can see it more clearly and identify each view easily. You can also see here some components that are invisible during design time, like image views that don't have initial image yet and will be loaded programmatically during runtime. For now, if it distracts you or you just want more space in your layout editor, click on this Select Design Surface button and choose Design instead of Design plus Blueprint. This removes the Blueprint view in your layout editor window. Designing layouts with XML files is a core aspect of Android development. In Android, your screens are designed using user interface components called views and view groups. A view is some sort of an invisible rectangle on the screen that shows some type of content in it. It can be a text, an image, a button, or anything that an Android application can display. A view group is a special view that can contain other views and view groups. It is generally used to define the layout in which views like text views, image views, and buttons are arranged on the screen. Some of the common layout types in Android are linear layout, frame layout, and constraint layout. For example, a linear layout positions its child view in a single orientation of either horizontal or vertical. However, a frame layout allows you to place nested views on top of each other. And there are many more layouts which you'll find useful in organizing your views. Going back to our layout editor window, if I want to add a button on the screen, I can either get it from the palette under common or under buttons. I'll click this button view and drag it on the screen layout just below the text view. Then, I'll change the text attribute to click me and the text appearance to medium. Though it looks good in the designer's view of the visual editor, but when we run the application, you'll see that the button appears on the upper left corner of the screen. The reason is that this button view is contained inside the constraint layout view group. Same with this text view. You can see it here in the component tree where the constraint layout has two child views, the text view and the button. When working with the constraint layout, you need to add a constraint to each child view. To add a constraint, simply click on this circle that appears on top, right, bottom, and left edges of this button and drag it to where you want to create a constraint. This is some sort of an anchor. I'll put a constraint to the bottom of this and connect it to the bottom of the parent container, the right of this button to the right of this parent container. And if you take a look at the equivalent XML layout of this, the constraints added to both the bottom and the end of this button are set to bottom and end of the parent respectively. Let's apply the changes and restart the activity. And it works. Let's add another constraint to this button so that it appears exactly in the middle. I'll drag this to the left of the parent, but for the top, I'll use this text view as its top constraint. So I'll drag the top constraint of this button and connect it to the bottom of this text view. You can verify it in the XML layout that the attribute layout underscore constraint top to bottom of is set to text view one, which is the ID of this text view. Let's apply the changes and restart the activity. And as we expected, the button appears exactly where it should be. I can rotate this and as you can see, the text view maintains its center position with respect to the parent container and the button's position with respect to the parent and relative to the text view. Constraint layout is now the default layout in Android Studio. It replaced the relative layout a few years back as it is more flexible, powerful, and easy to drag and drop views in the layout editor. 
One of the legacy layout that is still very useful as of today is the linear layout. It is the most basic layout which arranges its elements sequentially, either horizontally or vertically. To demonstrate the linear layout, I'll click on this constraint that links this button to the text view and press delete. This removes this constraint. Now, I'll click and drag a horizontal linear layout into the screen. Take note that this linear layout is now a child of this constraint layout. We now have a nested layout in place. I'll resize this linear layout and make it smaller for you to see its border. Now, I need to add its constraint. I'll click the top and add a constraint to the bottom of the text view. Then, its bottom to the top of the button. Then, the left and right, we create a constraint to both the parent's container. Now, let us modify the height and the width of this linear layout. In Android, although we have different units of measure, like pixel, inches, or millimeter, we commonly use only two. First is the DP. It stands for Density Independent Pixel. And we commonly use it to specify dimensions like height and width of a view, margin, padding, and so on. The other one is the SP. It stands for Scale Independent Pixel, which we commonly use to specify the size of the text. I would suggest to stick with these two units of measure so that your layout can adapt appropriately to various Android devices that have different pixel densities and text scaling. Currently, this linear layout has a layout width of 284 dps and a layout height of 343 dps. If I want to maximize its layout width to occupy all the available space up to its constraint, I'll put here 0 dp. Similarly, I'll do this for the layout height. Then, I'll drag three buttons inside this linear layout and it sequentially lines up horizontally. And if I want to change the orientation of the buttons inside this layout from horizontal to vertical, I'll simply change this orientation and set it to vertical. And if I want some space on top and on the bottom of this layout, I can change it to the layout attribute and put 8 dps both on top and bottom margins. I'll also put 8 dps on both left and right margins. I can center align all the child view inside this layout by searching through this attribute search box, the center attribute. And under gravity, I can set this attribute center horizontal to true. When adjusting the width and the height of the views inside a linear layout, Initially, it is set to wrap content, which means that this view will expand enough to the size of its content. The current content of this button is a word button. And if I change this text to say, my first button, you'll notice that its width expands as well to match the content. But if you want the width to match the parent container, regardless of its content, we simply change the layout width to match parent. I'll do this for the other two buttons. I'll select both by holding the shift key while selecting both buttons and set the layout width to match parent. Linear layout also supports assigning a weight to an individual children with the layout weight attribute. This attribute assigns a weight value to the view in terms of how much space it should occupy on the screen. A larger weight allows it to expand to fill any remaining space in the parent view. Child views can specify a weight value, and then any remaining space in the view group is assigned to the children in the proportion of their declared weight. I'll change the layout weight of the second button and set it to 0.5, and notice the effect. And also, the layout weight of this third button, I'll set it to 2. If you want to see the equal proportion of the height based on the weight value assigned to each child view, Set the layout height of all the child view to 0 dp. Note that if you use a horizontal orientation of the linear layout, use the layout width instead. Let's check it in the emulator. And now, notice the exact proportion of our buttons with layout weight of 1, 0.5, and 2 respectively. Let's take a look at the auto-generated XML layout file. I'll right-click on the XML editor and select Folding. Collapse all, and as you can see, we only have one parent layout, which is the constraint layout, 
And if we open it, you'll see that we have three child views, a text view, a button, and a linear layout, which is another layout container. You'll see its attributes such as the height and width, margin, gravity, and orientation. And then, it has three button child views wherein all of its width is set to match the parent container, which is this linear layout, and all of its height is set to 0 dp. The main difference is that the layout weight is set to 1, 0.5, and 2 respectively. In a constraint layout, to manage child view alignment and spacing, we can do a similar thing. For this, I'll drag another three buttons and place it inside the constraint layout and not inside the linear layout. And you can clearly see it in this component tree that these three buttons have error that says missing constraint and constraint layout. And that's the rule when you use constraint layout. You must specify at least one horizontal and one vertical constraint. I'll add an end and top constraints to this rightmost button. And also, a start and top constraints to this leftmost button. I could add a horizontal and vertical constraints to this middle button, but what I'll do is to select all these three buttons by pressing the shift key while selecting it. Right click and select align top edges. You can do it here or you can also do it in the component tree. I'll right click again and now I'll select chains, create horizontal chain. You'll see the three buttons horizontal spacing are equally distributed. I'll change the chain style by right clicking it again and I'll select chains, horizontal chain style. And by default, the chain style is set to spread. I'll change the style to set it to pack. And now, you'll see that there are no more spaces in between these buttons. I'll change it again to spread inside. And as you can see, both the left and the right button touches the left and the right sides of its parent container, producing a much wider equal space inside. Let's see what it looks like on an actual device. There are plenty of attributes that you can experiment on when working with different views and layouts. I suggest that you explore on it and see the best that suits your needs. As a challenge, try to create an app that matches the given layout. It consists of a text view and a couple of buttons that resembles a basic calculator app. You may use any of the view groups that we have discussed to arrange your child views accordingly. And again, thanks for watching. Please click the like and subscribe button for more programming tutorials. This is Joy Go and hope to see you in the next video lecture.